Yo, what is up guys? Joker bringing you another video with my opinions on Once Human, the open world survival crafting looter shooter game, right? Uh, think of something like Fallout or Daisy smashed together with a survival crafting game. And that's essentially what Once Human is. We received Once Human on July 9th to very mixed results. And my last video going over the fact that there was pretty much review bombing and fear mongering going on uh, about the TOS and about how it's stealing your data, how it's injecting a Bitcoin miner or something into your computer, things that have all but been disproven at this point. Uh, Thor from Pirate Software has a very good video, like I mentioned in my last video. Um, he didn't have the video up at that time, but he put up a video explaining, no, it's essentially normal live service TOS, so we're all good there. But we're going to move past that. Uh, at this point, I have 19 hours in the game and I am currently level 23. I've killed the first two bosses and I've explored a decent little chunk of the map. So quick TLDR added a post edit because I looked and I'm ranting on for pretty much the rest of the video about a bunch of other stuff. Um, TLDR, what I would rate the game is a solid seven and a half, eight out of 10. I feel like it's a really good game right now. Is there issues? Yes, but with the amount of support from the devs and currently the, the current foundation of the game, I feel like it has a huge amount of potential being not only uh, free to play, but having no pay to win aspects and holding a lot of community events. So I figured now is a good enough point to go ahead and give my impressions of the game since I pretty much have almost that 20 hours in, right? What I like about the game, what I don't like about the game, what I feel like could be improved, stuff like that. But before anything else, I do want to go ahead and pause real quick and give a huge shout out to the devs, uh, Starry Studio, right? They have been incredibly helpful um, and incredibly uh, communicative. Nope, uh, communicate. The communication with the community from the devs has been really good, is what I'm trying to say. Sorry about like that mini stroke there. And the reason why I say that and I want to give them a shout out is since day one, anytime that there has been an issue or a question or a concern that has been brought up by the community, the devs are on it like that, right? Like if we jump back to the launch, you could only make one character on one server. A lot of people were extremely unhappy with this and within hours, the devs went ahead and put out a post saying essentially, okay, we apologize. Based on player feedback, we see that you guys want slash need multiple character creation. We originally weren't planning on doing that. We were planning on having it uh, pumped out later with the multiple character creation. As you can see, they were plan pan uh, planning on it being on August 1st. However, because of your feedback, we went ahead and just launched it. Now, we apologize that this led to a poor gaming experience and we got that fixed. So within hours of an issue popping up from the player base, not only did they acknowledge their mistake, explain what the original plan was and when it was originally uh, set up to be fixed, they took the player feedback into consideration and went, okay, this is something that you guys want right now, so we'll pump it out. Then we have the next day, right? There is issues with a bunch of people fear monitoring about the TOS, right? I had a video about this, how people were spreading misinformation and pretty much fear mongering about what the TOS meant that because a lot of people were saying that it was like stealing your data and stuff like that, where it was pretty much all but stealing your social security number 
And multiple sources came out essentially validating that, no, that's not the case. Uh, like in my previous video, uh, like I previous mentioned as well, Thor from Pirate Software essentially looked at it and he said, no, there's nothing wrong with it. This is a normal live service TOS. And then uh, Starry Studio also came out and um, addressed it as well. They went, hey, we take this user data privacy very seriously. We want to go ahead and apologize for any other confusion or uncertainty that happened like there isn't something there isn't anything shady going on we want to continue to have a completely transparent communication and with you guys right we want to make sure that we have a strong connection with the player base and anytime that there is player feedback we are happy to uh, address it right um, the next thing that popped up was seasons, right? Because I guess a lot of people didn't really um, notice that they said it was going to be a seasonal game mode. For a person like myself who plays a ton of seasonal games, like if I just give you a rundown, right? When Black Desert has seasons, I jump on there. When we have seasons in Last Epoch, I jump on there. On top of that, we have, um, what is it, Path of Exile, and then we have Torchlight Infinite, and then we have Old School RuneScape, right? Anytime that there is a seasonal game mode on there with like the Dead Man mode or uh, just the other seasons that they've had, I, I jump on there, right? I'm a very seasonal game player. I love seasonal games, so I play a shit ton of them. So going into this, I saw it was a seasonal game mode, and I guess a lot of other people didn't notice it. So, oh, Diablo 4 is another game, right? But going back to my example, I guess a lot of other people didn't see that it was going to be a seasonal game mode. And that was an additional concern that popped up. And they went ahead, same thing. As soon as they saw that this was a concern, they put out a post explaining how the seasons work, what's going to carry over between the seasons and all of that. So pretty much just a huge huge shout out to move away from this segment of the video just a huge uh, um a shout out to Starry, uh, Starry Studio with the communication and transparency. I love when devs do this. Um, like as an example, when Last Epoch launched officially, right? And they were having server issues. They went ahead and the CEO like addressed the concerns, right? He, he was apologizing. He was like, look, this is the problem. We want to have this transparency with our player base. We want this healthy line of communication. And I love when devs do that. It gives me a lot of hope for the game moving forward, because as long as there's that healthy line of communication between devs and the player base, the game's only going to get better, right? So moving away from that and showcasing a couple of the features that I do enjoy, the first thing that's going to be starting us off is the survival manual. You can open this by pushing F6 and it's going to go ahead and be essentially your wiki, right? This is going to be your guide. This is going to be showcasing you, uh, showcasing everything that you can do in the game as well as explaining what everything does. You find a new mechanic, it's going to explain it to you. You find a new building, it's going to explain how that does work. I really do like when games have this because it really dumbs it down and makes it super easy for me to understand without having to use a bunch of third party resources, right? Instead of having to constantly Google stuff or try to look stuff up, the wiki being integrated in game is just super helpful. Like uh, Last Epoch, I love their integrated wiki as well. It's just super helpful and super good in my opinion. Up next, we have the feature that I fell in love with almost instantly, and that is going to be the base building in Once Human. Think of 
every survival crafting game that you've ever played and think of the quality of life features that the base building had and smash them all together and that's essentially what once human gives you the base building in this game in my opinion is one of if not the best base building in a survival crafting game that i have ever experienced there is a small caveat because um apparently enshrouded has a really 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 good base building system but i never played enshrouded so i can't really speak on that i've just seen some of the houses made in enshrouded and they are pretty gorgeous um but there are some really cool houses that you can make in uh, in once human if you are more architecturally inclined as well a couple of the houses that i've seen while i've been playing i took a couple of snapshots right so there was this house that was on a river that was literally floating it looked super cool and badass and then there was this one that was built on a cliffside that had a thematic like lighthouse thing going on with like a spiral staircase right so if you are more architecturally inclined than me, you're definitely going to be able to get better bases than, you know, a box. Uh, you can get some really cool bases going on. I mean, you have all of the engrams at your uh, disposal to make some incredible bases. And I can't wait to see some of these because I know some of these are going to look fucking nutty. But it's one of my favorite features because it streamlines the build building process the base building process so much it has resource pooling it has base dimension outlines it has a free flying camera so you can go ahead and check it out on top of that it has the ability for you to move your base i'm going to go invisible real quick so you can see it if you push b and then Z, so enter building mode and push Z, you're able to go ahead and move your base wherever. And this isn't like a piece of your base. This relocates your entire base. And when you're in a map that is this huge and you want to relocate it, the ability to just go ahead and move your entire base location with the click of a button moving all of your crafting facilities with that much ease it's just such a huge quality of life it's the best one of i'm sorry one of if not the best um, base building system in a survival crafting game like i said that i've ever experienced one other thing I wanted to mention about the building real quick is the house blueprints. These are going to be blueprints that do carry over between the seasons. So what you can do is set up a base that you really do like and then save it as a blueprint. And then you're able to go ahead and use this throughout multiple seasons. That way you don't have to constantly redesign your base every season. You only only have to make your base once and then save the blueprint and then in the next season just use the blueprint and it'll build the features out as you have access to them so once again just another huge quality of life with the building system the third and final pro that i want to go over for the video right now because i'm hoping to keep this relatively short is going to be the deviant system so Deviants are essentially little monsters that you get from doing multiple things. You get them from boss drops, you get them from gathering, you get them from just naturally exploring, right? And there are these little pets that will go ahead and do a whole bunch of different features for you. Like there's combat pets, there's base management pets. So like this zombie guy, uh, he works as like a tank for me where essentially if I have him partnered, he'll go ahead and absorb a portion of the damage that I would take. This ghost in the raincoat manages my crops for me. This little robot dude mines for me. Uh, butterfly is combat pet. This guy's a combat pet. This is the first boss pet. This little jelly guy, I think he works like the ghost. I don't know. Oh, uh, no, he heals you over time. Okay, so he's like a pure up support. 
this samurai guy who looks fucking sick as fuck um and he teleports around slashing people when he's your setup pet he's my current pet right now right um super fucking dope looking i don't even remember where i got him but he pretty much teleports and he slashes enemies this plant right here is the second boss pet and it gives you a crafting material then we have another butterfly and a, another um little octopus guy at a higher level uh, apparently they do scale with strength with like the skill and activity rating so that guy is just significantly better than that guy so that's really really cool there um i've said it numerous times i'm kind of a pet slut i'm i'm super biased when it comes to pets and minions in games when you are able to get pets or minions in a game that is always a plus for me that will never be a negative especially when they are diverse and cool looking right like none of these even look remotely the same or have the same function and there is a ton of these right like right now i only have eight and there's what 16 24 i i don't know how to count uh so 8 16 24 32 40 about 50 deviants and i believe they're going to be adding them um with the seasons right I, I believe they are going to be adding uh new deviants every season let's see if i could go ahead and get this open real quick i need to remember the button uh let me let me figure out where it is real quick here we go i found it right uh the season info i don't remember how I got here. So you hit escape and then you hit mana bus and then you go season info and then you go features, right? Um, and it goes ahead and it shows you all of the deviants that can be found, I'm assuming, in this season. So I don't know if these 50 are exclusive to this season. I'm going to go invisible so you can see them all. I don't know if these 50 are exclusive to this season or every time a new phase comes out for the season it's going to add more or if this is the pool of deviance and it's just going to constantly grow but the fact that there is so many of these it's like a little creature catching pet gathering game inside the game itself so just a uh, huge plus for me i love i love when you can get minions and pets in games going into uh, the first negative the first con right is going to probably be the biggest issue that a lot of people have with the game and it is going to be the menus right there is way too many and like i was having trouble finding the list of the deviants there is literally just way too many types of menus right you hit escape and there's one two three four five six menus for your backpack then there's five menus for the explorer's guide get united there's four menus there the shop events there's another four menus there on top of that there's an additional three menus over here and it's just it, it it's too much right like if they went ahead and they streamlined this and it was just in one place i think a lot of people would have uh, uh way fewer issues with it right but i kind of do agree that there's there's too many different menus and windows it could be overwhelming for a lot of players right like because even if we go in here it's one two three four different types of menus we go in here it's another four menus we go in here uh we go in here right so there's just there's too many windows to manage for a lot of people uh, especially if you're trying to look for something specific it's going to be a pain in the ass to get to it majority of the time like i don't want to have to go inside a menu inside a menu to try to get to something if i could just have like one menu that had like all of these 
I would really, really appreciate it. But that's one of like the first uh, big pros that I've seen. Uh, not pros, sorry. One of the bu- first big cons that I've seen and one of the most uh, negatively reviewed things is the fact that there's just, there's way too many different tabs and windows. They need to find a way to like streamline it a little bit if they can, because there's just too much it's overwhelming for a lot of people second main issue that i have is going to be really melee combat and um and once human kind of it kind of feels terrible almost to the point where it's just straight up discouraged right um it's just delayed It, it it does does not feel good at all it, it like i was saying it, it pretty much feels like they're straight up discouraging you from using melee combat it feels really janky and floaty so that's pretty much the second uh issue that i have uh, i know it may not be a huge deal to some people but i would really like them to try to do something about this because that right now there's like no reason for you to actually use melee combat over um over just using a ranged weapon because it just it it does not feel good like there's literally no benefit for you to be in melee distance of an enemy in the game the third and final thing that I have an issue with so far is the difficulty scaling and the fact that it's kind of non-existent um the bosses that i've encountered so far they haven't really shown any kind of challenge um they've been super easy i i've never felt like i was in danger of dying i may be like just super over preparing for the boss fights or it may be the fact that it's cut into segments with the phases right so it can only be like so difficult in every phase it only goes up to so far um the content is only available like in small chunks right or i i i don't know what it might be but there's just not really a challenge that i've experienced yet there there's been no hard content i've taken everything on solo and i've had absolutely zero problems with any of it so if there could be like an increase in the difficulty scale that would be very much appreciated and it might be something that comes later right um i am still really early i'm only level 23 i've only killed the first two bosses and i believe phase two will knock everything up to like level 40 or 50 something like that so there's a chance that the content is going to get significantly harder uh, as i progress but as of right now there hasn't really been a challenge so hopefully that's something that can be improved but that pretty much wraps up my 20 hour review of once human right i think it's a really really good game i know it has its issues i know some other people have had issues that i have not but i have a feeling if the devs continue to be as transparent and uh, work with the community uh, with feedback as much as they have been I-, I feel like once human has the potential to be uh, one of the biggest live service games currently on the market like they just need to fix a couple of things and i can see it being one of the best free-to-play games with the largest player bases currently on the market right now i think there's something like 300k players uh right i think there was a global event where they gave us rewards yeah over 300,000 concurrent players on right now and i i feel like it just has the potential to continuously grow as long as it stays on its current trajectory of getting better and better 
but hey what do i know tell me i'm wrong down in the comments uh tell me that you hate the game and i'm an idiot for x y and z um if you've watched to this point in this video which i think is something like 20 minutes I do apologize that uh, I ranted on so many things for so long, but I just wanted to give my full opinion of the game. I'm gonna try to make sure that I have timestamps where it's gonna be like uh, the pros, the cons, and then like the overall review. That way people can jump around if they want to. I am gonna go ahead and try to finish the journey, right? Uh, each time there is a new phase, so at least once a week, uh, if not more, I'm going to be jumping on until the end of the season. That way I can go ahead and get all of the rewards, show other people that I'm better than them uh, as long as time allows, because I do have a couple of things coming up. Uh, Dead Man, Apoc uh, Dead Man Armageddon starts on July 19th. This is a PvP uh, game mode for old school RuneScape. It's super fun. I'm not the best PKer, but I always enjoy the Dead Man modes. I've played literally every one. Uh, they're so much fun, right? I'm going to be putting up another video explaining this and going over it in case you want to give it a shot, explaining why you should give it a shot, even if you're not that much of a PvPer. I think that you still could enjoy it. On top of that, there's the announcement for Path of Exile 3.25 on July 18th, and that is my main game. I have over 7,000 thousand hours in path of exile right oh i guess i guess right under seven thousand hours in path of exile but still seven thousand hours in path of exile it's my main game i love the shit out of it um and it's what my main channel is based around let's go ahead and take a look uh this is my main channel where i go ahead and put all my arpg stuff as well um mainly path of exile and and uh, you can always go over there, you know, like, comment, subscribe over there as well. I'm trying to hit that 1K over there before this channel overtakes that channel with subs and everything. At the rate it's going, it's probably going to do that pretty soon. But it's whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I choked on my own spit because I was talking too fast. But that pretty much wraps up my 20 hour review of Once Human. Quick recap, I feel like it has its issues, but overall it is a really good game. I have a feeling that it has the potential to be the largest free to play game that we have on the market as long as they fix their issues and stay on course with the devs being uh, as transparent and communicating with the player base as much as as they have been i have a feeling like this game could be one of the biggest if not the biggest free to play game on the market right now we already had an event because of the fact that there was over 300,000 concurrent players which is insane numbers right um obviously uh is it gonna hold all these players that's to be determined but i have a feeling that there could be a, a bright future for once human as long as they stay on track as long as they communicate with the player base don't do out of touch updates don't put pay to win shit in and stuff like that as long as they stay on the current trajectory this is going to be a game that i plan on playing for a very long time however with that being said um there is a couple of things coming up that i'm going to be playing i'm going to be playing the dead man armageddon game mode it only lasts two weeks it's another seasonal game mode that i do enjoy uh for old school runescape i'm going to have another video explaining why i think you should give it a shot if you play old school runescape um just because even if you're not the best pickayer uh I feel like you're still going to have a decent amount of fun or you may be able to find a decent amount of enjoyment from it. I play every dead man mode and I always have fun, even if the amount of playtime I have in the dead mode season does vary. Sometimes 
it's a couple of days. Sometimes it's the full two weeks. Sometimes it's a couple of hours. It all depends on RNG and what else is going on at that time, right? This starts July 19th and it goes through August 3rd. I'm not going to be able to play this full thing because uh, Path of Exile has its 3.25 season coming out at the end of July and Path of Exile is my main game. There's also going to be a rather large dry content, uh, dry content streak on this channel because I play a lot of Path of Exile, right? I have almost 7,000 hours on Path of Exile and I have my main channel geared around that. So I always put up a lot of content and I play that steadily for usually two to 500 hours a season. So I, I play a lot of Path of Exile and I put the videos up on my other channel. Uh, <laughs> self plug feel free to go check out that channel i'm trying to hit 1k potentially before this channel hits 1k even though at the rate that this one's growing compared to that one um i feel like this is going to hit 1k before that one but you know what i'm fine with it either way <laughs> but yeah uh how do you feel about once human do you agree with my pros do you agree with my cons do you think i'm an idiot tell me down in the comments but don't forget to like comment and subscribe to stay up to date with this and future content up until the release of all that other stuff like i said i'm going to be doing some dead man mode content i may put out some guides for once human for like new players and uh show you like the ropes like um tips and tricks where to get deviant stuff like that right to go ahead and help you guys out uh but yeah until next time take care